in the heart of the Welsh valleys, a young man had dis- hey, young man! A deceptively young and unfathomably handsome man had decided that it was his destiny to become the greatest dog agility handler the world had ever seen. So he set about learning his craft. His front crosses were crisper than a dry December morning in the Brecon Mountains. His ketchikas were slicker than a boiled pigeon in a rubber tube sock. The intensity, accuracy and speed and natural flamboyance he brought far surpassed anything the sport had ever seen and would ever likely see again. The time was approaching where he would be ready to shine on the world stage and begin his legacy. But he realised, to win any battle you must first know your enemy. Welcome to episode four of Know Your Dog Agility Enemy. Today we've got Barry James on the show. You all know the deal by now, so let's get into it. So here we are again then, episode four with Know Your Dog Agility Enemy, um, someone I'm sure you're all familiar with. So do you want to introduce yourself? Um, yeah, hi. Hi, Chris. Um, obviously, I'm Barry James, live in Cardiff, and yeah, teaching the agility for a living. Yeah, everyone knows Barry. Um, and usually I ask the question why... Why are you so special? But I'll answer that for you today. You were my first ever agility lesson, Bar, weren't you? See, and then you got hooked. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Think. Addicted. Yes, that's it. I remember actually teaching you up in Capilli, and then um, a video, I think Amy put a video on. That's and it, James, yeah. and James it's commented. It's mafia, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, class. I still look like that now. <laughs> right, so first question then, for those of you who don't know you maybe on a personal level, how long have you been doing agility for? um 29 years i believe now 20. um i started um my wife was working on a ride in stables and they did agility there cool. in Caffili. she was the yard manager so yeah and they did it on a monday there so we started going up on a monday evening so quite a familiar story you came over from horse riding i guess i mean i'm not sure the exact discipline you were in but do you want to say a bit more about that yeah i used to show um section d welsh cobs under saddle in harness um in hand um quite successful got to hoys and also uh was placed at the royal welsh so yeah pretty decent never owned my own but i was sponsored by um people so in toyota so it was good oh that, that was my next question actually you don't have any anything to do with the horses at all anymore or uh no i have put on a bit of timber since i used to ride <laughs> yeah uh, just a little bit um but i still like like the horses and like sam's not working with horses now either so um, but when I go to different yards, I'm still involved, and I love obviously Olympia yeah. and chatting with the famouses. Yeah, it kind of combines the two Olympia does for you, doesn't it? Yeah, but I used to go as a kid to watch obviously the horses and the dogs. Yeah, um, never thought I'd actually get there, and then when I qualified for um, yeah with the dogs, it was just amazing to go there. So it kind of leads me on to my next question. Actually, is as if we planned this back. Um, is that one of your favourite memories? From agility then uh the olympia because it kind of combines the two things um success wise yes and no uh, i never actually won there i was placed third um had a couple of rounds with the fastest time and the odd pole down yeah. um what dog was that that was with ness um so she was there twice before she was three and a half and then unfortunately cruciate went when we were competing in spain at wao yeah so, and i never brought back yeah, it's a hard one to come back from, isn't it? For humans as well yeah. as dogs, I think. Yep. Like, that's like we're talking about biggest successes there. Um, what's your favourite memory? It doesn't have to be, like, success-related. It could be anything. What's your favourite memory from Agility? Um, it was probably with um, Rue a couple of years back, um, probably winning uh, the Camdor Cup up in Melbourne oh. because um, it was, like, a quite a big course, and he qualified later in the year in Novice because it was a Novice final. Hmm. Um, but most of the dogs that were competing there were already grade seven. Okay. It was quite a big course, and you, you can hear the whispering, you know, oh my god, it's yeah. massive course, never gonna get around there. And I was thinking, eek, and then <laughs> uh, it went, yeah. so it was yeah. And the amount of prizes is probably one of the best finals, you know. I'm not you know, just saying it. I won so much stuff, like seven hundred quid's worth of Yeah, I think posts. it's one that is definitely on the uh the agility map now, isn't it? Because of how good a competition it is. Yeah, Alagan does an amazing job to get all the sponsors' prizes. Yeah, I agree. agree. I, you know, good friends with them as well. So it's always nice to plug a friend yeah. business, isn't it? Yeah, too right. Um, so 
we, we talked about like your favorite memory. Have you got a favorite show? Is there a show that you look forward to every year? I mean, obviously a lot of people enjoy Thames because of the disco, but what about yourself? Is there anything else in particular you like? I didn't know, I didn't know Thames had entertainment. No, I know, I know. Um, yeah, Thames has obviously got to be the biggest party one. Um, got some great memories from there every year. Um, like crowd surfing and luckily uh, Dan Shaw's mates were there to pick me up. Well, yeah. me up off the tables. Rockstar for a night. Yeah, exactly. And also I did um, like Avalon, not last year, obviously the year before. Oh, Judged yeah, and yeah, I forgot Avalon. about that. Absolutely amazing. Fabrice was like, yeah, it's one of the best events I've ever been to. So if you get a chance to go anywhere, I would say go there. The novice days of the first two and then the like senior advanced days of the next two. But it's, excuse for a holiday, it's isn't it? place to go to, yeah, definitely. Going to try and get back out there again yourself? Yeah, I had plans to go um, last year, um, but obviously now next year, which is going to be a bit awkward, or this year, I should say, yeah. um, it clashes with uh, Crufts and a judging appointment I've already got, so depends how the shows go, and obviously with travel, what happens. But yeah, lot, lots, lots yet to be decided at this point, isn't there, I think, for this year? Yeah, but I'm sure lost. I'll be back over there. I'm sure I can't yeah. leave that. It's the phone parties, and Fabrice keeps posting all about the powder cannons and things now. So. <laughs> I, I, you're in your element in a phone party bar, aren't you? Exactly. <laughs> okay, so done. you do a lot of coaching at different clubs, uh, maybe some dogs that are, you know, you travel the whole country, really. Are there any dogs that you see? Um, well, out of all the dogs that you see, then, which is the dog that you'd like to steal to be your own? It doesn't have to be in this country. It can be abroad if you want it to be. Well, I did have a massive um, thing for um, Jess Patrick. Jess Patterson's um, Lux, because it was like, even at FCI when it blew the seesaw, yeah. it's just amazing and powerful. And yeah, I, there's just so many all around the world, though, in there, you know, in this country and abroad, there you, well, for me. Um, God. Yeah, there's so many. If you can hear crunching, it's the dog on the bone by the side <laughs> of me. Not me uh, picking my toenails or anything. Um, yeah, um, God. Any dog, I think my own, to be honest, because it's the partnership you get in it. You know, I might take someone else's dog and they might not run for me or they might be too fast for me. Got some cool dogs as well, haven't you? You know, Rue, Augie, they're both yeah. still competing. I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah, for so. sure. I can't see why it wouldn't be, isn't it? Yep. What nicknames have you got for them then? Have you got any? I know you've got a couple. Um, well, Diva's just like, well, she's a princess. She's a diva. She's like me 16, so she's getting on but I love it a bit she's my dog in a million so um obviously Ness was Vanessa and the show name was oh what's occurring from Gavin and Stacey so that was quite funny listening to him at Olympia saying oh what's occurring in Costa <laughs> um did they yeah, do so the accent met. though Bar? they did the first the second year they did when it was more popular but at the first year it was oh what's occurring <laughs> um yeah um yeah so she's Nessa Shanessa Jenkins Sugar Tits you know. <laughs> uh, um, Ruby is obviously Ruby Doo, uh, Rubes, Doobie, and then Ogles. Um, so for but... some people, actually, I think this is worth mentioning. Do you want to tell them what Rue's full name actually is? Because I think some of them think it is Ruby Doo. Oh, it's actually Mendip Star, rumour has it. So he's obviously from Lesser Charlotte Scandal. Um, yeah, so I was lucky that I was looking for a pup and was not let down. It was a, didn't happen, the litter, and then spoke to Charlotte and she was like, well, yeah, and that's when I had Rue. So his name's so, actually yeah. Rumour, though, isn't it? Yeah, Rumour, yeah. Yeah, but like lots yeah, of people don't actually Ruma. know that. You think his name is <laughs> no. Rue. Yeah, Ruby Doo. Most people think he's a female because I call him Ruby all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then I got um, Oggie. He's Darley Falls Oggie, Oggie, Oggie. Um, and he's called Oggles Oi. Yeah, I think he listens to Oi more because when he goes wandering, I'm like, Oi! <laughs> yeah. It is quite embarrassing when you walk in and he disappears and you shout, Oggy! And yeah, in the distance, you shout, oh, 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 yeah. yeah. Classic. So, yeah, but hopefully, um, like when the show starts and whatever, I'll be able to get him out there because he only did um, any size, not last year, the year before. Yeah, it's been um, a tough one. There's a few people, obviously, well, more than a few who's got dogs that have essentially missed their first year. So, hopefully, now we get back to a bit of normality and everyone can get back out there on the circuit now. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so like I said, you do a lot of coaching, it's your job. Um, so for someone who was new coming into agility, is there any piece of advice that you would give them? 
Um, yeah, find somewhere reputable um, with a decent surface, decent equipment. I know we all start somewhere, but um, you know, there's a couple of videos you watch online and things, yeah. and there's people, you know, in a car park of their local supermarket with some cones and poles, and you think, is that correct? Um, and then some people on really deep, deep sand still jumping at full height. You know, I know we've got choices, but a poor choice can like affect your dog's career. So, you know, as much as it's supposed to be fun. starts almost, can it? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, when I, I have gone to some places myself and I said I'd rather stand out in the rain than be on a surface inside in the warm, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's it, really. Just find someone and someone you click with, really, to um, give you information. You might not want to stay with them, but at least they're going to give you some information to start you off on the right foot. Yeah. Um, and if you think you want to go on to bigger and better things, then do it. There's no, you know, I don't have a problem with people like yourself starting with me and then going on to someone else or coming back now and again. And well, it's fine to watch think, people, isn't it, you know? Yeah, exactly. There's no one size fits all, trust me. Yeah, it's not exactly. No, but that's <laughs> it. It's like you said, everyone like has their idea of how they're going to handle. Uh, everyone has their, you know, their own style or whatever the case may be. And it's just finding what works for you. But yeah. yeah. And, it's, and it's quite um, going on to like inspirational people sort of thing. When I watch um, people like Stan from Russia, yeah, um, he's like absolutely amazing. Um, but no one ever says to him, oh, yeah, you broke criteria. And I was thinking, and then when I train some people and they go, oh, yeah, but I broke criteria. I can't like I break criteria. And I'm like, did you watch Stan at the Worlds? Yeah. You know, and then think, well, his criteria obviously is different to theirs, but he gets the job done. So, and I'm not dissing anybody who sticks to their criteria because I know I'm rubbish at sticking to criteria. No, it's, it's like I said, though, it's all, it's a personal thing, isn't it? You know, if you've got someone who you look up to in agility, which is actually going to be my next question, um, oh. then that's, that's kind of... That's what you aim yeah. for. And that's a like, I could tell you. Yeah, well, I have got loads of people that I look up to, really. Um, and again, it's because, like, how can I say this? Um, meeting them, well, watching them first, obviously, because you think, oh, God, that was different. Oh, they're really nice to their dog. Or I wonder how they trained that. And again, even if I don't know them, usually in the bar later, I will get to know them and have a chat and then find <laughs> out all the info. Buy um, a shot. Exactly. Um, well, no, they get them to buy me. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> but yeah it's just things like and again I think the Jewish community don't see that side of people like I can quite well I shouldn't say names really but you know I've had drinks with and been up till early hours playing stupid games in hotels <laughs> um, after they've just won the gold medal or they're running the next day in a, to win a medal and yeah. they're still up at two o'clock drinking you know the Germans are the worst <laughs> yeah not mention any names just mention, mention yeah. countries as a whole yeah Sweden, <laughs> Germany, America, yeah. But, yeah, but no, there's lots of, and again, in this country as well, you know, I admire people that will stick to the criteria as in like, oh, no, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm not drinking tonight because I'm running tomorrow, da, da, da. Um, and again, it's people's choices, like as much as I'm competitive and I want to do the best for me and my dog, um, I also want to have a life and enjoy it. So, you know, the entertainment and the social side is just a big part for me as well. Yeah, that's, and like I said, I, I don't disagree with you there. It's all about doing what suits you, having fun with your dog at the end of the day. Exactly, and they don't know whether they knocked a pole or missed a contact, you know, so and they still, you know, so yeah, yeah I'm with that. I'm all, I'm all for the so celebrate success. Yeah, for sure. And there's plenty of that if you if you look hard enough, and you know, it's exactly. not some people will focus on all the negatives, and at times like this, especially, I think it's even more important to, you know, focus on the little wins, should we say. Yeah, it's like um, I, I did a training day, up, I say up north, it's not really up north for most people. Um, you know, when you get people coming into the training who are like um, agility champions, for example, and then you think, my God, why have they come to me? And then when you ask, and they're like, I'm, like, I'm really surprised you're here. And then they're like, yeah, but I think you can add value to my repertoire or you can test my skills or whatever. So at least I'm giving something. Um, and they recognise this, so, and they're willing to do it. So I'm quite happy to be involved and when you do watch them like later on think ah oh, I might play a small part in that even if it's like a minuscule one at least I played a part. Uh, I think go, that goes to like down a bit to the mindset of the people who do end up being champions and it's called growth mindset where you are always open to growing. Yeah um, to change yeah. yeah exactly. like, I, had, I will name drop like when um Tasha messaged me and said oh can I come for one to one the one year before going to the world and I'm friendly with them anyway sort of thing. Um, and it was just an amazing feeling that somebody who was like two or three times world champion was asking me for one to one. Um, yeah. And since then, I've gone, like, I've obviously become really good friends with her and Matt, um, went to the wedding and everything else. But um, her asking me was a massive confidence boost for me. And I think a lot of people 
don't have the confidence in agility for themselves. Yeah. You know, they just think they can't do it. Well, as long as they're striving to be the best they can for them and their dogs, that's all that matters, I think. I think it's the confidence of putting yourself out there a bit as well sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, I've had like days that I think, oh God, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. I should have tried harder and blah, blah, blah. But then you just got to get on with life, you know, it's too short at the end of the day. Is this current climate is showing us. Yeah, we all have off days. Just crack on. It doesn't make a difference, does it? Yeah. At this point, just want to take a few moments break from the interview with Barry to say thank you to our sponsors. K9 Transport Solutions is a place where you can get bespoke vans made to your specification. They are a one-stop shop solution for all your dog transportation needs. Whatever type of crate setup, whatever type of van can all be found in one place www.facebook.com k9-transport-solutions and back to the interview all right so we go on to the non-agility questions then we just had christmas do you have anything nice for christmas back um yeah i had some i'm not really um what's the word we're not really a christmas yet and buy it for the sake of this christmas if you know oh, what I, mean, I, 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 know yeah, I mean if i didn't have um, it, i'd probably be the same as you yeah, but we do like, um, Sam bought me some um, really nice pictures of the dog, some blocks of like Diva, because she's getting on, um, and some like hexagon or octagon sticky on ones, like tile things. Yeah, yeah. Um, of, um, Ness at Olympia, and there's some of Diva at Crux and things. Um, so they were really nice um, personal ones, if you know what I mean. Yeah, memories. Yeah. Memories you can look yeah, back. Yeah, and the odd, the odd things like, you know, T-shirts and smellies and the usual chocolate. and Any gin? More drink, more drink yeah. <laughs> Lots what's your favourite gin then? Because everyone seems to be into gin now. What, what's your favourite? Well, I'm, I look, do prefer the fruity ones. Yeah. Um, is this more like sherbet or pop? So you don't feel like you're drinking and then just <laughs> go hit, hit the fresh air and it's like, wow. Um, yeah. so I do like the Copperberg ones at the moment. Um, I like the Copperberg gin. I've seen them flying about a bit though. Yeah, yeah they are really nice. Um, but yeah, and I've like, again, lucky enough, like I said, when I train different places, they usually buy me gin. So I've had some different ones to try and yeah I tried um i think it's called tarquins it's a cornish gin yeah i had that um as a gift just before christmas so that was, i, I tried that over really uh, nice. christmas and that was nice i had blackberry yeah. and cornish honey or something like that it was oh, right. i haven't tried that i had the original one the blue bottle one you had the red one then that's it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and it bought for me as well yeah. i didn't even know about it but it was lovely really nice so those yeah. gin drinkers give it a blast yeah exactly yeah i do like well, to be honest i like to try them all we're currently just like finishing off the mince pie flavor one for christmas just it to use it up i don't know about I that know. it's not the best no i don't know about that i'll leave that for sam i don't know if i go for that one. all right so if you could come with a warning label then what's your warning label oh god sexy um, wet. <laughs> yeah well you know that um the times i see you standing out training people in your big trench coat you're always wet pal. i know I know. See, that's why I give up everything. Um, it's probably um, don't give more alcohol after two a.m. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something like that. Nothing good happens after twelve. <laughs> yeah, I did actually um, look at those collars and leads. You know, you get and it's like do not pet or whatever. And there's one do not feed. Yeah. There should be not do not give alcohol. I think. Yeah, after two p.m. I think after two a.m. I mean, I think that's a good uh, good suggestion. <laughs> It's like the gremlins, isn't it? Is no good story ever starts, does it? No good story ever starts with, um, I was eating the salad, <laughs> and then... <laughs> Unless you're Dave Munnings, the salad, then obviously. Yeah, exactly, exactly. He, he's, he loves a salad nowadays, but... Yeah. Are you superstitious then? Uh, no, not really. Um, I just try and basically be me, relax. At the end of the day, like I said, it's, um, it's going to happen. If you put your all into it and it doesn't happen, you can't blame anyone apart from yourself. Um, and if someone's better than you on the day, then they're better than you. So good luck to them. Again, I'm quite happy to be beaten and then celebrate someone else's success. Yeah, for sure. I think that's part of the competition, isn't it? Try and win by all means, but, you know, it doesn't always go right, yeah, does it? Exactly. It's nice to be important, but more important to be nice. Yeah, I agree with that one as well, yeah. All right, so I've played a few of these with you. What's your favourite drinking game? God. I don't know. I did like um, come up in a memories actually the other day of twenty one, and it was up with a Shrewsbury tag lot, and yeah, that's yeah. a uh, Yvonne was on it. So that's quite a good one. Um, oh, when we spun around the broom, do you remember that one? Oh yeah, 
brain. That's always good for a laugh, isn't it? Yeah, but I get bruises and I damage easily. It might look like a fat suit and I'm padded, but... <laughs> um, um, yeah, but I end up usually, after the games, then end up doing something really stupid, like, as you know, the contemporary dance bear and all that sort of shit. That was one of my questions as well. I was going to ask you when you learned to dance contemporary style. Yeah, well, so, you know, I best let drop in London Olympia when I was at the party there. And, <laughs> um, I wish we had like a bigger can. field of view on your camera so I could get you to do a contemporary dance for everyone watching now. It's brilliant. Next, next time, next time. Hopefully the mem when the memory comes up next time, make sure to share it because that is okay. class. I remember that. I was just, yeah, got <laughs> In awe. Funny. In awe is the word you're looking for. Yeah, <laughs> in awe, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's been quite a lot of drinking games. I, um, one year when I was managing uh, Team Wales, the first year, I think it was, when it was in uh, Bristol, um, we did have quite a big session the one evening and we had shot glasses from the table to the ceiling. I think left there at like 2am, the bar staff had gone and just left us to drink. <laughs> um, we had the shot glasses up to the ceiling. I was uh, Greg, Anthony Clark. It never starts good if it's got Greg because he like drinks water. Does and it makes you have the shots, yeah. Water quaffer. Yeah. So, yeah. so it doesn't need to be agility related, this one, but what is one thing that like really annoys you or makes you angry? Frustrates um, you or anything like that, you know? Something that really winds you up. People parking over my drive. <laughs> you have you have some of that, do you? Right off, yeah, because I can't. Because with the dogs in the van, I hate unloading them on the road because I don't use leads. I just like each cage open and then they jump and run up the drive into the house Pop them in. Um, if someone's parked over the drive and we live near a school as well so it's quite often and then you oh, say I'm yeah, quite I'm polite at first I... yeah and I, I'm quite polite at first you know and I'm saying like, can you move and they go oh, yeah won't be long I'm just dropping the kids off and I'm like yeah but I want to get in now yeah. you know and it's just yeah they just don't see it and especially if you've got loads of shopping and they're like uh, well can you park there in a minute well do you want to come and carry the shopping in yeah you know, so I'm quite calm but I'm lucky I, got, I, I see I understand why people get frustrated with it. Obviously, I take my kid to school, but I try. I well, I don't try to. I don't park in front of people's driveways because I can imagine how frustrating it is if it happens to you every single day. It would wind the me. The thing up. is, I'm never home very often, and when I do, it always seems to happen. <laughs> it's just probably it's happening. Time. Time, isn't yeah, it? yeah. It's probably happening yeah. because you're not home. Because if you were out there just telling people where to go, they probably wouldn't do it. Exactly, and like Sam works like nine till five, so um, she's like schools are already not there or gone sort of thing so yeah so she doesn't see it but yeah that's my pet peeve you'd have to put some kind of deterrent out for them i don't know what i'm not going to make yeah. any suggestions in case i incriminate myself yeah i can see okay so really i've got, got an idea yeah. right that um in agility you know like in darts everyone has their own walkout music yeah well i reckon that if you qualify for a final you have to have your own walkout music so what would your walkout music be I'm sexy and I know it's got to be. <laughs> yeah, obviously, yeah. You clearly <laughs> thought about that as well, haven't you? <laughs> no, it's actually because I had that when I was in Avalon. Um, they had music to walk out because they have like fire eaters and belly dancers. It's like oh, amazing. Really? Yeah, and they have like smoke bombs and they introduce you through flames and through a big inflatable <laughs> dog's mouth. I did so it's amazing. That. Um, but I did have um, elimination music with I'm sexy and I know it and everyone clapping at the world for one year as well rather than the it's all but the Greek, the smashing the plates music. I didn't, I'm not a fan of that. No, it's, it's good for the atmosphere as well, isn't it? You know, no one likes getting eliminated, but at least if everyone's like having a bit of a laugh after it, then it's not so embarrassing yeah. that you've got to go around the whole course knowing that you're eliminated. You know what I mean? Exactly. And you've, you've traveled wherever, half across the country or wherever, or to another country. Um, and you've worked hard together nine times out of 10. So, you know, you've proved your worth together. So why shouldn't you enjoy your 30 seconds? Yeah, exactly. So what do you think is your worst habit then? Apart from eating and drinking. <laughs> is that exactly. a habit or is that just a need? Everyone needs to eat and drink. Yeah, but not as much. <laughs> well, yeah, true. Um, so maybe overeating and over drinking then, that's the habit. I think for me it's the wrong times, to be honest, because like if I'm driving somewhere to train, um, I drive, um, drive somewhere, walk the dogs, and I train all day, and I walk the dogs again, and then I'm eating late. Yeah, yeah. And obviously you're eating and drinking. So um, it makes a big difference as well, I think, doesn't it? Because obviously you've got less time in the day to kind of plan and that kind of stuff. Yeah, nine times out of ten, I'm away, whether you'll be in Scotland or Cornwall or wherever. And then, again, obviously people like to feed me. 
<laughs> um, yeah, so I blame them really. So that's not really my fault. I know I couldn't eat it, I shouldn't eat it, but yeah. But again, life's too short, isn't it? You know. Exactly. So if you had a superpower, then what would you have if you could have a choice of any? I'm not going to say skinniness or slimness. That's not. A um, I could do better than that. Do you know what? I know it's, it's probably going to sound corny, but it'd probably be um, to be able to like, not heal people, but you know, but like stop cancer, stop coronavirus, some sort of power to. Yeah, that's a good get one. Get rid of any. Yeah, just a healing power. You'd be like a, yeah. a male Mother Teresa. <laughs> yeah, but better skin, hopefully. Um, <laughs> yeah, by yeah. Hair, yeah, for sure. Yeah, do you know? Do you know? Like when you see and you lose friends with like cancer and coronavirus and everything else and i just wish that someone could make me you know wave a wand and it'd be gone and yeah it's uh yeah it's just you know if it happens yeah. to you as well it's obviously um i think the only thing that people want when they're ill is to get better isn't it and then when we are better yeah. we kind of take it for granted i i know for me because like i'm i'm fairly lucky with regards to like getting like colds and that kind of thing I don't often get them. So I kind of take it for granted when I do feel normal. And then as soon as I got one, the only thing I want is just to feel normal again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's for me. Like I've suffered with, I've got a bad foot at the moment, whether it's been for like nine months or so. And I've had scans and nothing seems to be helping. I've had loads of different treatments and I'm just like, it's not getting any better. Yeah. Um, so if I could, yeah, heal that, I would be sorted. But again, life goes on, isn't it? So you've got to just, just put this moaning. I'm trying to do everything I can to make it better. And, that's all you can. Yeah, exactly. Um, lockdown coming up. What's your recommendation for like a, a series or something like that for people to watch? Oh God, I don't watch much telly, really. No. Um, well, to be honest, at the moment I'm watching all the um, their reruns, um, Impractical Jokers or whatever it's called from America. I used to um, watch that a lot. Yeah, they they are hilarious. I do enjoy. Yeah, them. and I like. Um, I'm watching those at the moment, so it's like 23 on catch up to watch. So I'm watching them. Um, yes, I mean I don't like depressing stuff, and I'm not into all the sci-fi stuff. Um, but yeah, that sort of stuff I watch. I've watched, been watching like Netflix recently with the missus because she's been off over Christmas as well. So watch some good films on there. Um, yeah, but I'm not really into series. Is and oh, that's good though. The, the, the impractical jokers for anyone who hasn't seen that they should have a watch because they're only like 20 minutes long, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I'd love, like, it would be my thing to go in a supermarket and, like, do the tennis thing, twin stuff in people's trolleys. Well, I do that anyway, but... <laughs> yeah, the, the balloon one, that's really good as well, when they tie the balloons to the back of people and that. Yeah, and the pegs. The pegs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there are yeah. some there, there are some cracking ones. They're just It's just light-hearted humour, isn't it? And it's for times yeah, like exactly. these, because, of, you know, something good to just watch quickly is a no-brainer. Yeah, and I am turning into, um, and I've only been home a couple of days, but... Um, you know, the Bargain Hunt and Antiques Roadshow and Flog It and all that crap. And I'm like, guessing. <laughs> I'm like, no, there's no way that's going to be 50 and whatever. I wouldn't pay that. And then you see it go for like two grand and you're like, shit. Yeah. That's so wrong. But yeah. Always hope you come across that one thing that's worth millions and you have to pay five pence for it. Yeah, exactly. But I don't like car boot sales because most of the people at um, Walk Rabbit did go to a couple of years ago and they were all smelly. and. <laughs> <laughs> need a wash no. find some soap offer them some soap yeah yeah um okay what if you could be any animal then what would you be um see now i heard you ask the others this they all like had good answers i haven't really got a good answer i'd probably say um either a horse or a dog um can't be a dog can't be a dog it's too obvious can't be a dog um, it'd probably be a Welsh cob horse then, really. So it yeah. does well, food-wise. Yeah. Looks good. Stamina is okay in short bursts. Nice. Um, <laughs> Dangerous over 10 metres, basically. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's it, really. Yeah, I'd be, yeah, powerful, short stamina, but, yeah, majestic looking. Yeah, nice flowing mane. Yeah. All right, we do the quick fire. We do the quick fire uh, questions then. Um, again, it's easy for me to say not to think about them. The moment I say not to, you're gonna. But just try and answer. Um, what's your favourite song? Is it sexy? And you know, is that your favourite song as well, or just the entry music? Um, just the entry. Um, God, I don't know. Um, 
I like One Moment in Time by Whitney Houston. That's an old time. It's classic. Classic. Yeah. I think oh. it was because the Olympics the one year or whatever in a video. Um, and I was doing something and it, yeah, it meant a lot. Cool. Uh, messy or clean? Messy. Tea or coffee? Tea. Shower or bath? Bath. Lights on or off? On. Glass half full or empty? Full. Roller coasters or water slides? Water slides. Horror or comedy? Comedy. Netflix or YouTube? Netflix. Rich friend or loyal friend? Loyal friend. Hamburgers or hot dogs? Burgers. Passengers or driver? What was that? Passenger or driver? Or driver. Save or spend? Spend. Tattoos or piercings? Both. Yeah, good one on the last one. I agree with you as well. Um, Thanks for joining me, Bar. Uh, is there anything that you would like to plug before we go? Um, only to thank my sponsors, really, I suppose. Yeah, um, do uh, Tough Tugs, Joe Nash, um, Daz at Canine Pet Shop. Yeah. Uh, the Smart Clinic, obviously looking after my dogs, they're amazing. Um, and Glenn Darcy Dog Products up in Scotland because they've got amazing coats as well. Cool. Um, and if Thatcher's Cider want to sponsor me, that's feel free. Is that your favourite cider, all... Thatcher's? I like uh, some... Uh, oh, no, one Thatcher's is the yellow can, isn't it? Yeah, it's one of them. I'm quite happy to be sponsored by Thatcher's. <laughs> you will take, is... take whatever comes. Yeah, exactly. But Thatcher's is my preferred. Yeah, yeah that's it. And also, I'm doing... Um, to raise funds for WAO for me and Rue, um, I'm doing an online photo show I'm getting, so i got some cool prizes. So if anyone wants to um, help us out there, that'd be brilliant. Well, if you, if you give me the link to it, if you've got it up in time, I'll post it under this video. But otherwise, just check out Barry's page and it'll be on there at some point, right? Cool. Thank you so much. And yeah, thank thanks you for coming on, Barry. Appreciate thank your time, you. mate. If you want to say goodbye. Yeah, bye. See you all soon. Stay safe, everyone. See you later, guys. Thanks for joining us for today's interview. I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, let us know and let someone else know. We appreciate your company and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.